Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to this new year. I hope you're all doing well. This is going to be a health and fitness video helping you, those of you who may be struggling to shed a few pounds in this new year and to regain your health. All right, the struggle is very real, especially in America where about 70% of the population is overweight and 40% qualify as medically obese. Uh, you know, as human beings, we tend to be very self-destructive, and one reason is because our short-term goals for physical pleasure, for example, are often contradictory to long-term health. Statistically, your chances of success at long-term success at weight loss, your chances are between 5 to 10%. But that number is very misleading because that makes it sound like it's a, a game in a casino. But the good news is that the outcome is not random at all. And we know this because the people who have succeeded, they all mention the same series of steps and realizations that they had to take. So if you do what the successful people did, your chance of success is actually 100%. But if you make the same excuses and fall prey to the same errors and mistakes that the failures have made, then your chance of failure is also 100%. So it's all up to you. It's all up to you. Here is a good example of what not to do. This is a famous YouTuber. Uh, she almost died from cellulitis and pulmonary edema. She was 450 pounds. She went on a diet. She eventually lost 70 pounds. Uh, she was doing carnivore. She was doing keto. The update on her is that she has quit all of her diets and has gone back to fast food. And this is just some of the fast food she's been eating just in the last few weeks, okay? So there's no diet that works if you do not conform to the diet. Um, consistency is the key. But aside from freely made choices, what else is destroying people's health? Well, we live in a society that has systematically destroyed the mental health of the population, a sick, deranged society in which all major social institutions, including the educational system and the healthcare system, are failing badly. The most commonly reported psychological symptom or condition in America is anxiety. And the second most commonly reported is depression, with many Americans uh, citing that they experience symptoms of both anxiety and depression at the same time, right? So you live in a society that is essentially breeding mental illness. Now, if you are mentally ill, it becomes a lot more difficult to stick to a health and fitness program because you do not have the basic mental stability to be consistent in that program. So should you wait until all your mental illnesses are cured before you address uh, diet and nutrition? No, because it's unrealistic. Those mental illnesses can be managed, but if you're waiting for a total cure before you address your diet, that's, um, that's just an excuse, right? Uh, many psychiatrists have stated that a, an improved diet, improved nutrition actually helps alleviate many mental illness symptoms. Another reason people are struggling is because of addiction, food addiction. A lot of these foods have addictive properties. The University of Michigan did an, a study. They found that a pizza was the most addictive food, followed by chocolate, chips, cookies, ice cream, and french fries. And I believe that was a self-report study, so they just asked people, hey, what are you addicted to? With addiction, what you have to understand is nobody is smarter than their addiction because the addiction will hijack your IQ and use it to make arguments for continuing the addiction. If you're in real bad shape physically, you have to treat yourself, give yourself the advice you would give to a meth addict. You cannot be around your drug. You cannot be around people who use or push your drug. You cannot keep your drug in the house, and you cannot subject yourself to any of the triggers in daily life that make you want to use your drug. You know, if you're bad at resisting cravings, well, welcome to addiction, bro. But I gotta ask, if you give in to your cravings, why was that stuff in easy reach in the first place? Why did you have that stuff at your house in the first place? Or did you choose to buy it knowing you'd give in? 
I can tell you if you were to go to a medical professional like Dr. Now, this is basically what he's going to ask you. This is a FATS assessment. FATS stands for frequency of eating, amount of food, type of food, and surroundings, okay? So let me save you a trip to uh, my 600-pound life. Let's just give you an assessment right now. What is your eating frequency? Are you eating three distinct meals per day, or is it just chaos? Is there just no structure, no boundaries, anything goes, everything goes? You know where that leads. Now, the opposite of that would be like three meals a day or less. If you are eating less than three meals a day, you are doing some form of fasting. So you may want to research what the most beneficial forms of fasting are. Me personally, I do intermittent fasting. What is the amount of food you are eating? If you're not in a calorie deficit, you will not lose weight. Do you have portion control or are you still binge eating? If you claim to be on a weight loss program and you're still binging occasionally, get the fuck out of here. You're not on a program. You're just lying to yourself, okay? When you binge, you have quit your program. You have quit. That's not struggling. That's quitting, okay? Stopping binging, that's pre-diet. That's a pre-diet behavior. You must do that before you even start the diet. So get that shit straight. Number three, what type of foods are you eating? Are you eating foods that are known to be highly addictive and calorie dense? Are you eating foods that actually make you more hungry in a short period of time after eating them? Foods that uh, spike your insulin. You want to look into whole foods, right? Into basic nutrition, anti-diabetes type foods, foods that do not spike your insulin excessively. Me personally, I eat whole foods. I eat meat and vegetables. If you are complaining about your weight and complaining about your medical problems, but you're still eating fast food and junk food all the time, get the fuck out of here. You're not serious. And last, your surroundings, your support, non-food factors, okay? Are you under stress? Are you not getting enough sleep? Do you have enablers? Are you sedentary? A lack of activity? All those things set you up for success or failure. So your surroundings, All right? So there's your assessment. Uh, look at where you need to put in work. I used to be very overweight myself. There's a before and after picture for you. I was overweight uh, until I was not. Right, And I can tell you the two biggest obstacles to you losing weight, number one, other people's feelings, your enablers who see it as inconvenient that you might lose weight, and uh, your own feelings, right? You just ignore both of those, or at least that's what I did. I just didn't give a fuck. I just did what I had to do, didn't even give a fuck. I don't need to make New Year's resolutions because I just live right to begin with now. That picture was taken just a few days ago at the end of December, just before the new year, right? All of these, uh, uh, th this set of pictures, again, right? These are very recent. Keep in mind, I am 49 years old, right? I am almost 50. I'm almost 50 years old. And again, uh, these pictures, I took them literally a few days ago after, uh, a calisthenics workout. So there you go. Now here is a famous YouTuber, Chris Heria. I find his example useful. There's me copying Chris Heria. I just look for the most uh, badass psychopaths that I could find that seem to know what they're doing. One way that I stay in shape, uh, everywhere I go, I just lift up and I just hold my entire body weight up by my arms so that might have something to do with it i do weightlifting like free weights just regular you know bicep curls things like that i also do calisthenics and uh i do running and but the thing is before you do all this uh fancy working out type stuff you're gonna have to lose the excess body weight so that's all about diet and nutrition the most popular diet right now from what I've seen is the keto diet. There it is compared to some other diets. You've got keto, you've got paleo, you've got Whole30, you've got carnivore, you've got vegan and other plant-based. So which should you do? Well, the truth is, if you need to lose a large amount of body fat, the type of diet you choose is secondary to the main concern, which should be creating a caloric deficit. Because all diets, if they are successful, 
are based on you being in a caloric deficit. That means you are eating less than it takes to maintain your current weight. So if your daily maintenance was 2,500 and you ate 2,000, you'd be in a 500 calorie caloric deficit, right? So whichever diet you choose, it should be the one that makes it easiest for you to maintain a significant deficit that you need to be in. So how big of a deficit should you go into? Well, here's some information from the Mayo Clinic. Um, most hospitals will put you on a, on a diet of between 1,200 calories like there up to about 1,600, just depends. But 1,200 seems to be the magic number as far as the lowest amount of calories. So if you need 2,000 on average to uh, maintain a, a normal person, they're putting you in like an 800 calorie deficit. Uh, this is Dr. Now. Now he's famous for using the 1,200 calorie diet too. Uh, he didn't make that up. He's just following standard medical procedure. So it seems, uh, yeah, most hospitals would put you on 1,200 uh, at the least. Now, if you need to calculate what your current maintenance calories are, you can use a calorie calculator like this one from the Mayo Clinic. A lot of hospitals and universities also have these online calculators. Now, they're not totally accurate, but they're close enough. So once you know your maintenance, you can figure out how much below that you want to go. Now, these are these calculators are more accurate for overweight people. I don't think they would work on like an Olympic athlete. But yeah, it's all about that deficit and it's about not going off the cliff with the rest of society because believe me, this problem is going to get far worse for the majority. Ah, yeah, Christina Aguilera. Nothing I love more than vacuous celebrities just getting what they deserve for selling their souls, right? So yeah, society, it's, it's just, it's unsustainable. Okay, most people, you have no idea what what health destruction is coming very soon. But um, you don't have to go off the rails with everybody else. Try not to end up like these people. I wish you all the best of luck and the best of health in this new year. I'm out.